I apologize in advance, but I need my notes or I tend to wander off into strange places. So, <laughs> um, um, so I'm going to invite everybody to, to come in and get settled. Um, before we start the meditation, I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about the Nova Sutras movement and um, our connection with the equinoxes. Then we'll go into the meditation, and then there'll be some time for conversation afterward. And uh, just in case, uh, so y'all know, um, this is live streaming right now and then going to be posted on YouTube later. So if you don't want to be live streaming or on YouTube, try to sit on the other side of the camera. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so to begin, I want to tell you a little bit about what Nova Sutras is. Nova Sutras is essentially an eco-spiritual movement that aims to um, provide a welcoming space for people whose primary interest and orientation is connection with the earth, connection with living beings, and to develop a supportive spiritual community. So this is a movement that's inspired by science, by the philosophy of deep ecology, and by spiritual traditions from around the world. We celebrate eight key points of the year. We celebrate the solstices, the equinoxes, like the one that we're in today, and then the cross-quarter points, those points between solstices and equinoxes um, that are the mid-season points. So the solstices and equinoxes typically mark the start of each season. Equinoxes are particularly profound because of a few things that are happening globally that are the same all around the world. Today, everyone around the world experiences about 12 hours of sunlight and about 12 hours of dark. Everywhere around the world, with the exception of right at the poles. So there's that light-dark balance that's happening today all around the world. Everywhere around the world today, the sun rises due east and sets due west, anywhere you are in the world. So it's a great time to really you know, get oriented, get your bearings, figure out where you are. Because all of these things are true for people all around the world, it's also a wonderful time to focus on global unity, to really see ourselves as one unified species. Equinoxes are also times of transitions. The, this equinox, the Northern Hemisphere, is going into the darker, cooler part of the year the southern hemisphere is going into the warmer, lighter part of the year. Things are changing. Of course, in relation to that change, this is a time of migration. So we celebrate all beings who are in migration now. Nova Sutras celebrates what we call these octal meditations, these eight key points of the year. Because they're scientifically based, because they're globally recognized and globally relevant, they're about the orbit of the Earth around the sun, the tilt of the Earth's axis. This is for everybody. And of course, many religions all around the world notice and celebrate these eight key points of the year. One of the things that makes Nova Sutras special and different 
Um, we celebrate what we call Agaya and Ubuntu. Ubuntu, you can see it on the sign over there. Agaya is a new word that we've come up with to try and express something that's a little hard to express. And that is this profound connection that we feel as humans with what is really sacred about this beautiful, amazing, complex world that we live in. It does have that word Gaia in there. Some of you may be familiar with the Gaia theory that talks about all of life on earth as being a self-organized living system that seems to just by its very nature continue to perpetuate conditions conducive to more life and more complexity. Ubuntu is a word that we're borrowing from South African languages. And it refers to our interdependence with one another as humans. In Nova Sutras, we expand that idea a little bit to think about interdependence with all life. We only exist because of all of these other beings and their existence. So in Buddhism, you talk about interbeing as one of the key principles. In Nova Sutras, we see that all nature is sacred and therefore deserves reverence and loving kindness. We know that change is essential and inevitable. Nothing is really fixed. We know that complexity and maturity emerge from diversity and cooperation. You can see this in every living system on the planet. And of course, we recognize that the beauty of the living world is to be savored, to be honored, to be celebrated and protected. So before we begin our meditation, I'm gonna take just a moment to acknowledge that the land that we're currently on is unceded from the Awaswas people, the original people who lived here for possibly over 10,000 years. They're now represented by a group called the Amamutsun Tribal Band. So we thank them for continuing to serve this land and we honor them for allowing us to be here today. Now we're going to do a practice that a lot of indigenous traditions all around the world do, uh, which is calling the corners. This is another way of kind of getting yourself oriented. So it's midday now, which means we're in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun is in the South. Um, so I'm gonna start with the direction that the sun is and then go around the compass directions. Uh, then we'll acknowledge up and down. And then we're gonna start with ourselves and where we are in our center and then radiate out from there. Again, we use these terms, Agaya and Ubuntu, as kind of a shorthand for some really complicated stuff. So Agaya is that, that wonder and joy and recognition of the sacredness of nature. Ubuntu is acknowledging our connections and our interdependence. So we invite all beings to the south to abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. And then all beings to the West to abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. 
and then all beings to the north. May they abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. And then all beings to the east. May they abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings above abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the great tree beings that connect above and below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May each of us here abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings nearby abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings in this watershed abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings in the lands where Awaswas was spoken abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings of this Redwood Coast bioregion abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings of this continent that we sometimes call Turtle Island abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the beings of the vast and deep Pacific Ocean abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. And may all beings belonging to Earth's beautiful, bountiful, beneficent biosphere abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. Thank you all. Now I'd like to bring us a little deeper into meditation. So go ahead and get settled. Make sure you're comfortable. Just take a few deep cleansing breaths. Start to feel your weight on the ground. Feel the way the earth draws you in and down. Feel the way the earth supports you. As you feel the air enter your lungs, feel your chest rise and expand. Feel yourself connecting with the sky above you. Like our allies, the trees, we make this connection between the sky above and the soil below, between heaven and earth. Breathe deeply. Let your shoulders relax. Let your back be straight and comfortable. Let your hips and knees relax. Let your calves and feet relax. And allow yourself to begin to feel those connections of interbeing and interdependence that we call Ubuntu. Feel the connection and loving kindness that you feel for those you care most about. Consider how much joy and beauty 
the other living beings that you see every day bring into your life. Feel the air move in and out of your lungs and recognize that the oxygen you're inhaling has been exhaled by some plant, some algae, one of these amazing complex photosynthesizers. who are then going to capture the carbon that you're exhaling and build it into their own bodies. Recognize that all the food you eat was once a living being and that that life nourishes you and courses through you in this very deepest level of interbeing that we call Ubuntu. As you allow yourself to come into gratitude for that, you're touching just the outside edge of the vastness of what we refer to as a Gaia. This profound awe, joy, wonder that we feel when we recognize ourselves as part of the amazing complex dance of the living world. This is sacred and it deserves our reverence. And I know that everyone here has put forth will and effort in helping support that amazing, complex, beautiful world of nature upon which we all depend. We feel a Gaia when we see the beauty of a butterfly dancing in flight, or the structure of a leaf capturing the light of the sun. We feel a Gaia when we hear the crash of the surf against the rocks. There's a Gaia when we feel the breeze on our face. when we smell all the rich smells of a walk in the forest, when we gaze up into a clear night sky filled with distant stars. Allow yourself to feel that profound connection to the sacred beauty of our universe. Inhale that feeling of wonder and joy that we call a Gaia. And exhale your gratitude for that interconnection, your sense of Ubuntu and interbeing with all things. Allow yourself to continue to inhale a Gaia and exhale, Ubuntu. On your next inhale, turn that into pulling in all those threads of interconnection. Feel that sense of support and loving kindness from everyone around you. And inhale Ubuntu. Then exhale to spread Agaya, joy and wonder.
Inhale, Ubuntu, and exhale, Agaya. As we approach the time of the equinox in about 12 hours from now, let's continue to turn our attention to the equatorial rainforests. On the equinox, the sun passes directly overhead over the forests in Sumatra and Borneo over the forests of the Amazon, over the forests of the Congo. We know that these rainforests are under threat and we hold them in our hearts. I invite you to envision yourself on the equator now with the sun at the highest point in the heavens. If you were standing in a clearing, you would cast no shadow. But deep in a healthy rainforest, There's a soft green light that fills everything as the sun touches the tops of the tree's canopy. The air is moist and rich with incredible smells. You can hear the hum of insects all around, the calls of birds, the calls of monkeys and tree frogs. You'll catch the scent of flowers, spicy scents from leaves falling, fungal scents as things decompose and return to the soil, returning so quickly to the cycle of profound, riotous, abundant life that a rainforest has. In these rainforests, the trees are quite tall, maybe not to match our beautiful, beloved coastal redwoods. But what they lack in height, they make up in breadth. They reach out their leaves wide, catching the sun and the rain. And there are so many different kinds of trees there each of them an ecosystem unto itself, festooned with ferns and vines, teeming with small animals, insects, birds, butterflies, so much life in a single tree. These mighty trees are our allies they're helping to calm this climate crisis. They're healing us, inhaling some of the carbon that we've released. They're trying to save us from our fossil fueled folly. Imagine that we're all there together in that vibrant heart of an equatorial forest. in spiritual fellowship with the indigenous protectors of all of those lands. That amazing, complex, vibrant life makes the forest nearly shimmer with energy.
as we come together with all the love we have for this place, with the light of the midday sun shining straight down on the trees overhead. You can imagine that radiant energy filling your own heart. Feel that energy and vitality of a healthy equatorial rainforest. Envision it filling you as you transform it into Ubuntu and a Gaia and spread that out to heal all the forests around you and all the rainforests all the way around Earth's circumference. Together, we shine loving kindness, joy, and wonder, Ubuntu and Agaya, from the heart of a beautiful forest out to the whole world. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya across the deep and sparkling immensities of the oceans. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to every place touched by the equinox sun. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to touch all in the dark of night all around the world right now. Together, we shine the light of Ubuntu and Agaya across the universe from our beautiful little home world. Together, we are inhaling Ubuntu and exhaling Agaya. Together, we are inhaling Agaya and exhaling Ubuntu. Now extend these experiences of Ubuntu and Agaya and offer them as a gift to the whole world. As we transition through this equinox into the new season, let's take a moment to reflect on the season that's just passed and focus our intentions for the coming season. What are you grateful for? What are some things that you're ready to leave behind 
as we move forward in Earth's orbit. As you leave those things behind, what resources can you release to make available for new growth? What seeds are you planting for the future? What is emerging now for you? What are your intentions for moving toward a vision of a world abiding in a Gaia and Ubuntu for this coming season? Just take a few more deep breaths. And then when you're ready, very gently bring yourself back to here and now. You might very slowly open your eyes. Come now into a state of calm attention. Feel the energy of Ubuntu and Agaya that we shared for this equinox. Thank you for sharing in this worldwide equinox experience. We in the Nova Sutras movement, thank you for taking steps toward wellness and awareness and toward a vision of a world abiding in a Gaia and Ubuntu. Did you have something you wanted to share? I can close your eyes again. Just let your eyes close. And imagine those who are frightened by the change, who are now experiencing climate change right now. Okay. Their islands and their, their coastlines are becoming inhabitable. Towns like paradise are burning, and floods are occurring. But not just those people. Not just those suffering people, 
But the people in the middle classes and the upper classes in America that think there's no problem or that wish to avoid the problem, just consider how frightened they might really be. Maybe they say there's no climate change. Maybe they say nothing. Maybe they disagree. Maybe they fight us. But the point is they're frightened, possibly. So can you bring your compassion to the fear around the world so that we can help people calm down and think, calm down and realize. With Greta, calm down and read and think and work together because it is our only world. Maybe we can bring more compassion even to those who make us so angry or so upset and help some people simply realize. Just simply realize. And then when they realize, somehow deal with their terror. And my own terror at what is happening and what some people in my generation have given to younger people as a world to fear as well as to love. In the spirit of Gaia, to close as nature does our fears and let us be free. Thank you for sharing that. So now as we come back together, let yourself settle in again. And in just a minute, I'm going to invite you to find two people that you don't know And we'll do, and we have time for three quick go rounds with the three people. First, each of you will just introduce yourselves briefly, just your name and sort of a, you know, one breath introduction. What brought you here? What you're passionate about? What you work on? Do that in round one. In round two, if you want to, you can talk about what you experienced during the meditation, or if it's your turn and you don't want to say anything, just let there be a moment of silence. And then in round three, I'd like you to talk about how you see we can bring more healing, more support for those in fear, more unity and balance into the world. Then we'll have a little time as a whole group to discuss and share. So go ahead and again, try to find two people you don't know, or at least two people you don't talk to very often. And uh, if we end up with with a couple, a pair or two pairs instead of a trio, that's fine. But I think we're pretty close here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. 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 Oh.
Hello, do you want to step into this group? And, oh, Lionel, are you our only other participant? Hi, Lionel. Hi there, Michelle. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So I'm going to give you about five more minutes to talk in your small group. My Okay, you've got about two more minutes, so if there's someone who hasn't had a chance to speak up yet, make sure that they step up, and if you've been talking a lot, make sure that you step back. Yes, 
Um, essentially talking about your visions and intentions. Okay, so if you want to just wrap up your last thought here, and then we'll all come back into a circle. Here. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Our working with this now that makes a PowerPoint for the PCA. It can be a model. A lot of that oh, is just a piece just coming together. Okay, so if everyone can, can come back and um, Let's get in a circle. Stand if you want to stand. We've, we've only got about 10 minutes left. So. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so um, are there any specific things that really emerged from your discussion or that you felt from your meditation that you want to share with the whole group? Uh, we'll just let this sort of popcorn around. Whoever wants to speak, feel free. Go ahead. Well, um, Michelle, I, it would, I think it wouldn't hurt to begin expressing some appreciation to you for having the courage to take your vision and, and implement it the way you are and that we see today. I think that takes work, it takes courage, um, and you're doing something, you're, you're almost like creating something that wasn't there before. Or that, needs expression that we don't know the way to express. And so you're putting yourself right out there in a vulnerable kind of way. Mm -hmm. I think you're among the people here and we're appreciating that. Oh, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. I'll second that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. This is the second time I've been here. The first one was in the tree line. Mm -hmm. or, uh, this one with the sounds of the city, the charcoal heads in the train, and everything. I was just trying to accept <laughs> this one. Which one to 
and they have to do it. Yeah. I had an instructor years ago who said that you have to include all the best things that you have to be included. And accepting enough that you can have some sort of make, figure out a language that reaches everybody. That's what I keep saying, that's what I keep caring about. What am I going to do? Mm. This reminds me that simple basic experiences remind people who really are more interested. Yeah. Because sometimes it's a life of business. Like you said, there's a spirit of people. But my group had a lot of feeling about doing, mm. um, not just thinking, although we were concerned. Uh, had done thinking, wondering about well, what to do now, how to connect with others, and do it together, feel. I think there was a yearning to feel effective. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of feeling of not being effective. And yet, what had I done to be effective? Some people had more experience with activism than others. and. Uh, Kind of interior person, stay in my house and treat people with therapy, kind of inside all the time. And I like that, but this is external in a lot of ways. But as complicated as it is internally in us, there was a sense of yearning to, to do more. You were expressing that. So were you. you know, he was. I, I think it's a about coming out mm. yeah <laughs> thank you for that this um this this project for me started as just a thing that i was doing you know online huddled behind my computer in the dark and um yeah and uh and getting it out into the world is a piece of that and also you know getting out and getting engaged with the people who are on the streets and bringing both that need for activism and the need for grounding and connection and helping one another build our well-being and build our strength to be more effective activists um, that's what I felt I could could offer and, and the way that I, I could serve. So I hope that that this is starting to do that. So sorry, I should step back and let you guys say more, please. So Jamie mentioned um, about a set of meditation compassion for the people who are really feeling the effects of living in fear as their limbs and their spirit are destroyed. And then I was in a group over here when Carl in the sweatshirt mentioned um, doing research into economic systems and looking at economics and the fear that if, as a society, we really acknowledge and take in the reality of climate change, that this will have a very devastating impact on our current economic system and uh, can lead to crashes and bond markets, etc. Mm -hmm. things like this. And so this is a huge fear that gets in the way and puts up walls, right? So that it, it's just too frightening because we have been taught to understand how to survive in this kind of economic market, in this kind of economic system and so with the idea of that crashing and falling apart the fear is that we will not be able to survive mm -hmm. however there are many kinds of work being done starting with an awareness of biosystems and diversity in biosystems and taking that out into other work including psychologists and psychotherapists and um, Ken Wilber for example and, and many others, and, and the, the work being done to really include indigenous voices and understand 
indigenous communities and ways of living and ways of being. The, we have to get out of this contradiction. You know, and the, this is what the human brain does. It's autopilot. It's one of our autopilot things to go into black and white. So mindfulness, gaining mindfulness of, okay, that black and white thing showed up. Hmm. What's, what are the other, <laughs> what is the reality actually? It's inclusive, right? And really paying attention to the work that is being done in diversity and incorporating and bringing in more indigenous systems because these are the systems that have survived and have thrived on this planet until our modern capitalist. Yeah. No, not just capitalist. It's, there's no way to go into it right now. But, um, so turning back to integrative indigenous based understanding of the Together. I'd like to follow that because the Pachamama Alliance has been putting out a symposium for years now. It's always current and it talks to all those issues. It starts with the indigenous people in the group saying, You've got to wake up in the West, you've got to stop this rampant. Consumer, consumers, and you've got to look at this. And and so the symposium started with the indigenous voice, and we look to to indigenous folk in this land, um, the, the, the Native American. So that's where it sort of begins, and and we look in the symposium at how it is right now, and it's shocking. We all know it. We all suffer it. And it was what the strike is all about. You know, wake up. And then it goes into another phase where we look at how did we get here? How did we behave in this way? We're not bad, wicked, or evil. It's just we're operating under unexamined assumptions. And the bottom line on these unexamined assumption is that we're be separate. Mm -hmm. We're separate from ourselves. We're separate from each other. We're separate from nature. Anyway, so it, it goes through this investigation and looking at unexamined assumptions, and then we look at what's possible for the future, and we look at some fabulous things that are happening, and where do we go from here? And you know, we we come out of there really inspired. I mean, this energy of the strike is fabulous, and it's doom and gloom because people don't seem to be waking up. But then this. Symposium, this work takes us through the whole, a whole investigatory phase, and we look at all things, and then we come up together, connected, mm -hmm. and empowered. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Wow. And, and I welcome everybody attending the symposium. It's, it's on the 12th of October. It's local. It's at the RCNV Resource Centre for Nonviolence. And it's from one until five, and a little bit of registration and actual. October what? Um, it's twelve. Yeah, the and 12th. there's a there's a stack of the handouts about that one there in the middle. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, so are other things coming up for people? Other things anyone wants to say here or shall we start to start to get ready and close out? Um, I'll say something. Thanks, um, I was talking about how I think one of the things the climate crisis asks of us but also offers us uh, is a fuller use of our capacities as citizens. Um, and uh, I think we all know our governing institutions sort of that when they're at their best intention are kind of lumbering and slow. Uh, and the county is filled, I know for a fact, because I read their emails with hundreds of climate activists who are infinitely more informed and prepared 
be asking questions about what are the essential things we need to change in their elected representatives. Mm -hmm. So I am a big fan of people forming groups and taking these questions on themselves. I think it may seem slow, but I think you'll be surprised how much more agile uh, we can be. Okay. I have to uh, do full disclosure for everyone. I'm conspiring with Paul to help the community <laughs> learn how many more options we have, particularly in the citizenship realm, because it turns out we have very many more. And we're doing this for our teach-in on Wednesday night. And the first thing we learned while we were putting this together is that there are way more things than we can present. So we we're trying to consider the very most important things to be said in that four hours. And um, uh, just to reemphasize, we got a lot of work to do. For our citizens. Loud and Nelson. Loud and Nelson. So Nancy Lockwood, uh, Ernest, Ernesto Zaldano, um, Dan Chen, and Ben, what's Ben's last name? Hi, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. <laughs> they would be the main speakers, and but it will be at least half discussion and drawing on the resources of the activists because what's happening here already is already an example of the strength of what's going on. So it will be um, more like a teach up as much as a teach in. We're inviting as many people as possible to come and share their yeah. wisdom. Ty Tyler, do you have handouts about the Wednesday event? I didn't bring any of those. Yeah, and there's, Sis, why don't you go ahead and grab all of those and we can just sort of pass them around if people, people want them. Um, and also, he's signing on now, but um, if you could have that go around and if you want to be on the newsletter for Nova Sutras, you can go ahead and sign up. Oh, sorry, you still have more to say? Yes, that's the faith in our future event. Um, I think Tyler's got some, so I think he's bringing some for the uh, the real democracy teach-in. Um, is the Wednesday night, and faith in our future is Tuesday night. Uh, the real democracy starts at five. Faith in Our Future is up at Peace United Church and starts at 7. Great. Okay. Oh. Yeah, well, let's just pass the, pass the small ones around here. In case you want that info. Um, also, I wanted to point out... Um, that the next octo meditation, of course, will be the cross quarter between this uh, locally fall equinox and the winter solstice. So that's on November 7th. Uh, the actual timing of it is, that's a Thursday, and the actual timing of it is, uh, I didn't write it down, I think it's around 9 a.m. Um, so I'll probably do something online at that time. Uh, but then sometime around then, maybe on the weekend, there will probably be a Nova Sutras event. We might even do something in the interim, uh, ideally find an, a weekend when the weather's nice and do what's called Shinrin Yoku or uh, forest immersion process. So if you're interested in that stuff, um, if someone wants to take that and just get that going around and make sure that you're on uh, the email list for Santa Cruz Nova Sutras, and there are a few slips on there um, that were the, uh, the handouts for this event. So if you want to grab one of those, at least you'll have the website that you can go to and a little bit more info there. So help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So is anything else uh, coming up for anybody? Any other announcements? Go ahead. I'd like to say thank you as well yeah, for all, all of you for joining me. We're all 
a part of this together. So thank you for all of your help. Wonderful. Can I have? Can I say one announcement? Even though I wasn't a part of the event, really. Yeah. Uh, today at three o'clock. We're in the orbit. Lagoon, which is a bar over on Pacific Avenue. Uh, a local <laughs> activist, Alex Londos, is hosting a discussion, sort of, uh, and then we're going to talk about climate change, what we can do about it. It's kind of a gathering with pizza, I think. And there is also beer there. So in case you like pizza <laughs> or beer, that's a good place to go. Um, but there's flyers here. I'll leave, uh, actually here, I'll pass them because so I got too many. Here you go. And then there's more over here. Thank you. Thank you, Shadow. Great. And um, one more thing that we'll start around the circle here. So there's, these are mostly little um, like lapel pins, uh, but there are a few little fridge magnets in here because somehow we ordered fridge magnets once instead of the lapel pins. So, um, and unfortunately I was intending to bring my big bag of them, but I only brought my small bag. So please take one if you want one. Thank you. Oh, sure. Well, why not? <laughs> Um, so I want to do one last little closing bit, uh, but we'll, we'll let these things make their rounds. And then if you're comfortable with it, I'm going to invite everyone to, to come in just a little closer and, you know, hold hands. I will not make a sing kumbaya unless you really, really want to. I certainly don't want to stop anybody who wants to. <sighs> Yes, wow. beautiful idea. Oh. Okay, too many things. So Cecily suggested, and why didn't I think of this? Um, uh, let's go around once and just uh, hear everybody's name. So my name is Michelle. I'm Jack. Carl. Crystal. Bob. Walter. Rachel. Walter, Kira, <laughs> Mary, Pamela, Jamie, Paul, Cecily, Jolene, Brian. Great. Oh. Again, I just I thank all of you for being here, for all the energy that you're putting into this. I know that you're all doing great work in the world. And so I'm going to invite you to look around this circle and just meet the gazes of a few people and connect with all of the great work that they're doing and just silently thank them for that. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And go with Ubuntu and Agaya for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 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 um,